Go to getamazonnow.com and give a gift card. Welcome to Black and White Recovery. Your hosts have been associated with recovery programs for over 50 years. This show is not associated or related to any 12-step program. The advice is strictly to be taken as advice, or it may be used for drinking games. Always consult with your sponsor, attorney, doctor, or anyone with more common sense other than Lee. Hi, everyone. Black White Recovery. That's blackwhiterecovery.com to get all your updated episodes. So this week is kind of wackadoodle with the sound. It got cut off while we were recording back and forth. The episode is about uh, staying sober on spite, kind of a strange way. This whole episode is kind of an ADD hodgepodge of topics and we got bounced around a whole lot but uh, the basic core of the idea was don't let anybody tell you you can't do whatever you want so my name's lee the other guy is ian show's gonna pick up right here thanks for listening but you wouldn't know it but you wouldn't know it well okay so (laughs) we are you would would. we're we're kind of a phenomena yeah we're kind of taken off i'm not saying completely i'm just saying kind of there are okay. people who dig the show, and then there are people who hate our guts. Yes. Uh, oh, and both. So we'll get to the hate the guts part in a second. For those of you who listen, and just like the honesty and the refreshing talk of people actually sharing what's on their chest and living in a very real world and talking about very real things, we're your show. This is real-time recovery. <laughs> Uh, Now, for those of you who hate us and feel that we are nowhere near any tradition that resembles those that you like, my advice is go join Clancy's cult. Was that wrong? Yeah. Yep. Get a haircut. Put away the leather coats. Or my favorite line that I ever heard at a CA softball game. Write about it and tell your sponsor. At CA, they, they make you write? I thought that we go to CA so we don't have to write. No. Th- <laughs> there was a fight that broke out at a CA softball game, and one dude literally ran over and broke it up and y- looked in this dude's face and he yelled, write about it and tell your sponsor. Oh, my God. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. He was joking, but it's the funniest thing that I've ever seen. It was funny. When I used to share at, at closed AA meetings... I would always, uh, you know, and especially speaking, I would always um, qualify as being addicted to alcohol and all the old timers be like, he said addict, he said addict. And, uh, you know, in the old days when they used to have pay phones at recovery clubs, I used to speak at this new meeting, new meeting, and I put about five dollars and quarters up on the podium and everybody looked and I said, that's for you guys to call your sponsor when I start talking about cocaine. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. I mean. I'm a little fascinated with that one. So th- that's a good topic. Here's, here's a good early topic. Maybe singleness of purpose? Singleness of purpose. Okay. Yes. So I am technically dual diagnosed, dual addi- uh, quad addicted. Well, okay, I'm, I'm a garbage can. But I'm dual diagnosed, quad addicted. And technically when I go to an AA meeting that is quote unquote closed, I can't identify any of those other issues. Correct? Correct. (laughs) So I'm not allowed to talk about the feelings I have based on my depression, my medication, or what my doctor said. I'm not allowed to talk about the struggles with cocaine, heroin, pills, nitrous oxide, uh, whippets, whatever the hell I want to think of. I'm only specifically to talk about alcoholism and how that relates to my life in a closed AA meeting. Did I nail that? Yes. Okay. That's some pretty messed up shit. Of course. It's horrible. It's exclusionary. It is. It's elitism almost. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Because you take a guy that's new that says he's an addict and some asshole is like, uh, do you have a desire not to drink today? Do you have a desire not to drink today? Do you have a desire not to drink today? And the guy who just woke up an hour ago that wants to get sober is like, eh? And it's it's horrible. I've I've seen it done. I haven't seen it done lately. It's got in the Phoenix area. It's gotten much better. The uh, 
the singleness of purpose has been uh, watered down a little. Which leads to the ultimate second part of this discussion. And we'll talk about all of it. And I want to break mm-hmm. it down because I think these are the struggles that I had early. And then later on, I didn't really give a shit because I was the guy with the time. And I felt that my job was to scare people out of the rooms, which makes me a dick. I'll right. say it straight up. I like never have a positive thing to say about recovery. I mean, honestly, if I had my dithers and I had my way, I'd probably be drinking again. I don't think I'd ever do cocaine again. That that shit will mess up your life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There doesn't seem to be anything positive about that drug. Um, But if I had my druthers, I mean, if I really had my way, I would drink again if I could figure out how to do it like without destroying my life. Of course. Um, I don't know if that's Tell possible. About that I don't before. know if uh, any of the chemicals that they've made actually work to do that. Um, I'm not willing to put in the research at the moment, but I'm not taking it off the table, which talking to an AA purist, am I not actually setting up my own relapse? Well, I, I you well, know, you know me I, and that's why you're I, already doing your whole thing. I, I think it's I think exclusionary should be outlawed in the rooms. Well, I, ag- I agree. I agree. So, so here's here's, you know, I've been thoughts. to women's meetings, you know, when I was on house arrest and I had to put new meetings on my on my schedule that I filed a week before. And, I, you know, I didn't know that there were women's meetings and I sat outside and had to wait there. And that still wasn't OK. And it's like, well, if my surveillance officer comes by. I'm going to prison, so yeah, I'll just sit outside here. And you know what? After 20 minutes, they invited me back in. I said, "No, nah, that's that's your thing." You know, I, I'm I'm just here waiting for my my surveillance officer. And you know, I I've been to meetings that were strictly for undercover cops because I was able to find out where they were and got got pulled out of that one by my PO. Um, you know, and and I just think it's. You know, here's the thing. If I'm at an AA meeting, I say I'm an alcoholic. That's how I qualify. If I say I'm at an NA meeting, after I say to myself, what am I doing at an NA meeting, I qualify as an addict. Now, I still don't know the rules for CA. I mean, it seems like they use the big book. They say sober. They don't say clean. They say addict. They don't uh, but say it's, it's in alcohol. the literature. Well, I was around for the literature days. I almost became yeah. one of the stories because I just worked there at the right time. But right. The literature is any and all mind altering substances. Right. They're the only ones that make it pretty clear that anything, like anybody who qualifies from CA, technically, you shouldn't even be smoking. Anything that's mind altering is off the table in CA. Just wow. saying. That's the wow. technical. That's. I know no the. Masturbating? It. It's mind altering. Is it? It is in my universe. <laughs> I don't know. It just coffee just, would be. Yeah, I mean it, that that's that's too much. That's Any all. and all other mind altering substances. Yeah, well, that's a big statement. Too. I'm sorry, I'm addicted to oxygen. Um. Well, it's not mind altering. That's kind of a need yeah. to live moment, I guess. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I'm. I. I. Well, so is food. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I talked to a girl yeah, last night. Yeah, but you're she not. Said, you're not. She said she's it. a foodie. I go, isn't everybody a foodie? I mean, you need it to fucking live. No, not true. There are people who overeat. You should be. Somewhat... Well, that's different. That's different than being a foodie. Foodie's just someone that likes. Oh, the foodies like me. Yeah, I'm looking. I. Yeah. I'm a foodie until I have to cut weight for whatever ridiculous event I'm getting ready for. Hey, dude, how do you do that? I mean, I heard this one. This one kid. Uh, that I know he dropped 22 pounds and then he gained 12 pack 12 back the next day. Well, this gets us off topic. So I hope the people listening enjoy okay. this, but I'll, right. no, 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 no. We'll I'll answer the question because it applies to the topic that I initially had, but we'll go to, we'll go back to this elitism thing in a second. Okay. Um, today's original topic was the whole defying gravity. Why did you get sober was sort of my whole thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. So for those that don't know, please follow me on Facebook or Twitter at Lee Honish. Uh, Right now posted is a picture of me at the at where I train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and some pictures of me from events that I did in my 40s. 
I had a boxing match and I had a cage fight at had a cage fight at 44 had a boxing match with 10 years ago whatever that works out to be for me now, what's 38 what's the difference between Brazilian jiu-jitsu and regular jiu-jitsu Brazilians are the guys who basically took judo and kind of turned it into jiu-jitsu it was being done in Japan there was a Brazilian okay. version uh, most of the chokes. I mean, you just look at the lineage, and all you have to say is Gracie. Okay, that's kind of how it works. Right. There's a whole lineage to it about the Gracies and and the grandfather and where they got it from, and then the the brothers all started gyms, and then there are some really screwball offshot kids that have issues. But by and large, the Brazilians yeah, basically to took Brazil? Japanese took a Japanese style and made it their own, and they're very good at it. Brazilians are really good oh, at yeah. it. And I, I mean, I did Jeet Kune Do when I was a kid, but then I learned how to fire a pistol. And... Yeah, that, that beats it pretty quick. Yeah. So uh, at age 44, I decided that I was going to have a cage fight. And so I walk around at about 215 while I'm training, 210, maybe as low as 200 while I'm training. So I cut to 185 pounds. And I'm six foot one, and I'm a larger frame. I will say this. If there's such a thing as relapsing based on weight loss... I did it. Uh, no doubt about it. I, I I never took a drug. I never drank. I never did anything like that. But I became addicted to not eating, drinking very little water, and sitting in a sauna for days on end, cutting 15 pounds of water weight. And I enjoyed it. Like, I, I literally enjoyed it. My The reason I, I was going to bring up things as a topic was I don't know why people get sober in general. I mean, that's kind of a, a fascinating offshoot that we got into on accident. But I did all these things while I was sober and completely conscious of my activities. Like, these are not things people in their 40s should be doing. Uh, certainly, dropping 20 or 30 pounds of your body weight is probably not a really brilliant idea either. But, hey, you know, it's neither here nor there. Did I lose you again? No, I'm here. Okay. Your name popped up. So uh, I hope that answers your question. I, I, yes. I Honestly, I dropped the weight because I like, this is going to sound like a drug addiction. I like the way I feel while I was dropping the weight. Uh, nice. I enjoyed being in the sauna. I Is in, that how you do it? Just strictly sauna and pre-workout? Okay. And, the, 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 so milk, you're taking so. you're taking a pre-workout, right? So you sweat like a pig. So I'd like to take off 20 pounds between now and Friday. Okay. I'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> Okay. Everybody write this down, and it's the best high of your life. Uh, so you're going to go to your gym twice a day. You don't have to okay. go more than that. You're only uh, going to go for about 90 minutes. Anything longer than that, you'll probably get a stroke based on our okay. age group. Okay. So you're going to take your pre-workout igniter, for those of you who yep. don't know, that or creatine. They'll both make you sweat like pigs. They're quite okay. fantastic. Um, I like a good pre-igniter. Yeah. Um, I start off for a good 10 minutes uh, in the sauna till I'm sweating from every pore on my body. Then okay. go out and do a quick 30 minutes on the bicycle, right? So you're about 30, 40 minutes into this. Now go sit in the sauna for an hour. If you don't pass out and die while you listen to music on your headset or your phone, my iPhone tends to not be able to handle that much heat. But here's the greatest thing ever you will start talking to dead people. Like, it is straight-up sweat lodge crazy shit. I have never been that high in my entire life. Ever. Like, I, I've i taken... I'm, I'm, I'm a test tube guy, right? I, I'm the guy that everybody would hand it to and go, try this, we don't know what it does, right? I'm, I'm him. And so, uh, I was big into, a, you know, like mushrooms and all of that stuff. I'm telling you cutting 15, 20 pounds of water in a week, it's mind-shattering. It's unbelievable what it does to your brain. Now, it could be that I just baked my brain in a sauna, and probably somebody with medical studies is listening to this going, that's really stupid. Oh, I'll make it a step further. I, w uh, I had doctors examine me, and I was cutting so much weight that I was risking respiratory failure. I'm, I'm not saying that it was a good thing to do. I'm just telling you the bonus of doing it. And the bonus is you're as high as a kite. Like there is no way to describe the end. You can't 
if endorphins can